Hello, my name is Kassim Al Rafi. I am the Neo Systems Customer Support Specialist as well as the Power BI Specialist. Thank you for coming to this how to access and use the COVID-19 Power BI report. When you first log into your portal, you do need to click this quick link on the right here, Power BI reports, and it takes you to the app.powerbi.com, which is Microsoft's reporting services for all the Power BI dashboards and reports. Now we should have sent you a link when we first set up your environment. If you if you plan to host it with your own, within internally, uh, you do need a Power BI Premium license. Otherwise, message support at neosystems.com, and we'll just host it on our own internal servers here, internal uh, users here. Sorry. So from there, I can see here that in my workspace, I have this COVID example Power BI. I open it and the first thing I suggest you do is actually just take a head, head over to the notes notes page over here and what this does is it gives you a good idea of what each dashboard does. Just a quick little TLDR, uh, what you can filter by, um, what you should see, what you should be seeing and if you see any errors, uh, do not click any of the fix this buttons, instead just message support at Systems, and we can definitely help you out and make sure that the data you're getting is correct. So, without further ado, let's begin. As you can notice, this all process flows dashboard is just this one gigantic advanced find. Every process flow that gets pushed through uh, the iTrack portal, and doesn't matter which employee created it, which process flow it was, it will appear in this view. Um, it can tell you supervisor name, status name, what classification it was, whatever you need. This is where you need, this is just your gigantic view. Now, let's say you want to sort by a specific date, you have the option to either slide, and you can see that the date on the left side is being changed, or you can actually just click the little box here and choose which specific dates you want to. Now, one thing to note with this is if the um, incident was reported on a specific date, let's say incident was uh, reported on the 16th of April, but the form was created on the 6th, the created on takes precedence. Something to keep in mind there. So, like I said, you can either drag the slicer, click the buttons, or you have the ability to change the process flows here. So let's say you only want to see the cleaning checklist and see what cleaning checklist process flows have been pushed through your portal. By clicking this little filter here, you can see that it says process number is this, created by Casim, and it was reported on this day. By clicking form link here, it actually pulls you back into your portal. Now, if you are seeing this error, it means you're logged into the wrong account. So I do highly suggest that you log into the correct account and you actually see the process, the proper process flow, as well as all the um, information that comes with it. Likewise, if you only want to see which process flows Casim has filled out, by clicking Casim on the left on this employee slicer here, you can see that this is all the processes filled out and as I mentioned, status names, who he reports to, and what form links. Now, obviously, this data is test data, so it might not make sense when you're reading it, but I'm just showing you the functionality of the Power BI. And finally, I believe it's best practice just to clear all the filters you have in case someone um, comes into the report after you and starts noticing them and starts misinterpreting data. That way, everything is reset and all the data is shown properly. So the second dashboard is this process flow count. And what this does is it gives you a nice count, it gives you a nice um, understanding of how much your employees and how much your coworkers are properly filling out process flows. So as you can see here, everyone is keeping in touch with their pre-work assessment and monitoring, but, their main, but they could be doing a bit more cleaning or a bit more disinfecting. Now, likewise, you can filter this process flow here. So let's say I want to see who's filled out the pre-work assessments. You can see that. 64% of your employees have uh, participated with this process flow, and here are the four who have not. So maybe reach out to them, see how they're doing. And as always, by reported date, you can filter your, uh, your your slicers. Now let's say you have a couple. Let's say you want to search through a couple by holding Control and clicking. You have the ability to multi-select slicers as well. Like at, and that's it. at the end of it, this little eraser button here will clear the filter and all the data is properly set once again. This participation uh, dashboard is basically the process flow count just flipped on its head. So instead of seeing which uh, process flows have been filled out the most, it's actually showing which employees have been 
uh, participating the highest. So as you can see here, <coughs> excuse me with that. Uh, as you can see here, Gossam has been the most diligent when it comes to filling out forms, but John hasn't been. So maybe reaching out to John saying, hey, um, we are using the system now, please fill it out so we can monitor the spread of COVID as well as keep everyone safe. And you also have the ability to sort by form, or sort by process type, sorry. So if I want to see which daily check-in, still Gossam's on top, Tom's at the bottom, and these are the employees who haven't filled it out. So very simple, very similar to process flow counts. Next is this action registry. Now, action registry, corrective actions, form tasks, whatever verbiage you want to use, this just shows you which tasks are assigned to people. And ideally, you want this little light purple to be the entire uh, graph. Every time you see this dark purple, it means there was a task due that was not properly uh, completed. You have the ability to filter by due date, or you have Excuse me, you can just go through this little table here and it shows you who the task was assigned to. Now, unfortunately, because it's a one, it's a single user environment, they're all going to say iTrack support. But if you go into the form link here, you'll be able to see which user it was assigned to. As well as some just some generic stats at the bottom. And you just want to make sure that when a task or action is assigned to you, that it is being filled out correctly or completed on time, sorry. Next is this COVID assessment stats, and this is based off the pre-work assessment process flow. And it's what's really cool what it does is every time an employee fills out a, uh, a self-assessment, it will actually take the assessment answer, it'll take the, the, the survey that they did, and it'll tell you, okay, they were green for cleared, orange for presumed, red for confirmed, or yellow for exposed. Now you can filter per classification, so if you if you want to see, okay, how many of my employees recovered from COVID, you click that and this view will change, how many were exposed, presumed, so on and so forth. Now, as you can see, the um, the classification name and the assessment might be different. So if you see here that it was presumed, now Darren thought he was presumed, but he actually had a confirmed case, therefore it's red. So this takes precedent over that, um, just to keep that in mind. Or you can search to see, okay, how's Kasim doing? So um, he was presumed in the morning, but after he did the secondary screening, he found that he was cleared for work. Cool. Next sheet is his daily interaction log, and the most important things to note here is actually the word, the, these word maps over here. So you have an employee interaction word map as well as a non-employee interaction word map. So if I go here and I filter by by Darren, and let's say Darren comes down with the case, you can see that the employees Darren has talked to are Michelle, Kasim, Diane, John, and himself and Malik, right? Now, what this means is you should reach out to these employees saying, hey, someone you came in contact to um, became a bit ill with COVID, you should probably do a self-assessment and check up on yourself. Or if we check for Kasim's, you can see that Kasim spoke to Darren, Michelle, Jeff, and Diane as non-employees, so just people he randomly interacted to, and he, he should be the one who reaches out to them saying, hey, I'm now sick, please um, please do a self-assessment. And obviously the bigger the name, the more times they've been interacted to. The next is a daily check-in stats, and I do think this, uh, this uh, dashboard is extremely important for the wellness of your employees. Now what I mean by that is, in the process flow itself, there is two options. Do you need support, yes and no, or have you communicated with somebody today? Now, if you notice that um, Kasim here, he needed support, but at the same time, he spoke to um, he spoke to somebody at least four of the days he's filled out these daily check-ins. He's probably okay. He's still talking to people. Obviously, reach out to him, but keep in mind that he is uh, speaking to people. Whereas Michelle and John here do need support, but they haven't spoken to somebody. Maybe put on a bit of a higher priority, reaching out to them and saying, hey, what can we do to help? And just like always, you can see who's working from home, who's been isolated, who's cleared for work, and who's quarantined. And the form links are in every view. If you do want to filter by employee name, you can just click this table over here, and it'll filter by employee name for you. So the next one is this travel request stats dashboard. And what it does 
is it allows you to see which employees are requesting for travel, have they been approved yet, why they're leaving, where they're going, when they're leaving, so on and so forth. You can filter by employee here, or you can filter by status. Next is, is this alternate work location request dashboard, and this is also very similar to the travel request stats, saying, let's say, you know, I'm losing my mind, I want to go to Cochrane, rent out an Airbnb and just work there for a bit. I'll mention this here, the equipment I'm borrowing, and why I'm leaving. So as you can see here, I'm taking my monitor, desk, and company phone, because I, I just need to leave the city, I need to new, new, a new scenery for work. By clicking the link, you can see if it was approved or not, and you can see the actual full um, process flow and all the, all the information that comes with it. You have the ability to filter by employee name like you usually do. Next is incident report and these last two are still a work in progress. We're still looking on the best way to show this data. What it does is you're able to see which, uh, which incidents have been filled out, what kind of incident was, who was entered by, when it was reported, whose supervisor and so on and so forth, right? So the second it says on this top right here, it says, is this a COVID-19 uh, exposure or infection? If you click yes, these are probably your more high priority cases, or if it's no, it's just a regular um, uh, incident. You have the ability to sort by assets, spill or release, injury, or exposure, and um, basically all four together, or you have the ability to just filter by employee name. And as always, filter by reported date. Finally, the inspection process flows dashboard. This is best for process flows, business continuity, cleaning checklist, operational impact assessment, as well as week, uh, personal workspace. So what this does is let's say you want to see per weekly, uh, per, per weekly per personal inspection, and let's see Kassim, for example, he doesn't fill one out yet, it's good to know. Uh, Michelle hasn't filled one out, Malik hasn't filled one out, so Tom has filled two forms out, 1028, 1043 and 1049, so actually three forms. So from there, you want to sort by form type, look at the newest one, if you scroll to the right, you can see, okay, so he's good on this aspect of things, so when it comes to, are his feet on the floor, yes, are his about two, two to four finger widths between the front edge of the seat, so on and so forth, yeah. But when it comes to the contrast controls of his monitor, lumbar support, these, he's not necessarily uh, properly aligned, so reaching out to him saying, hey, uh, make sure you're doing this, or just for his own knowledge, to say, what have I done and what can I still work on? If you go down, you can see that at the end of it, uh, he still hasn't done it, so it's good to know just to really just track these inspections. So that's the general gist of the Power BI. If you guys do have any feedback, any suggestions, please reach out to support at neosystems.com. We did this um, to keep our clientele safe, to keep the uh, to keep our Neosystems community safe. Uh, so we hope you guys are all staying safe, all staying quarantined, all staying isolated, and uh, we hope to get through this together. Thank you, and have a great day.